This is Alex, Paul and Jess, a team of hustlers who have one aim, to make you, the public, part with your hard-earned cash. In this series, the hustlers will attempt to pull off some of their toughest scams yet, and to do so, they'll appear as you've never seen them before. This is The Real Hustle Undercover. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition, so they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show... You thought estate agents were bad. You've seen nothing yet. I could cry. I could actually cry right now. Don't make me feel too nervous now. Tennis champ Greg Rosetsky faces his toughest match. And Alex and Paul go new age. They're very good for uh, getting your chakras all aligned. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. Renting rather than buying a place to live is a flexible and stress-free option for tens of thousands of people throughout the UK. But it's a competitive market. Demand is high and genuine bargains are few and far between. So when you find one, the temptation to snap it up is hard to resist. This is The Interception. Jess and Paul have become letting agents for the day. They've set up a morning viewing of an apartment on the outskirts of Oxford with two students who want to flat share and are looking for a good deal. How long do you think you're going to be? I'm just about to do a flat viewing now. OK, speak to you soon. Bye. Are you for the flat viewing? Yeah. Hiya. Hi, yeah. Nice to meet you. You're right. I'm Susie. Oh, What's your name? David. Hiya. Hi, What's your name? David. Do you want to come on through? But it's cold out there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Rob? Do you want to come on through, boys? Rob, this is Deo and David. Hiya. Yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, want to show you the place real quick? Yes. Paul wastes no time giving them a tour of the place. Two bedrooms. Yeah. Two spacious bedrooms. That's the bathroom. A well-appointed bathroom. Do you guys cook much? Yeah. Fitted kitchen. And, um, and this is the living room where you probably spend most of your time. <laughs> and the icing on the cake, a stunning sitting and dining room with balcony. Yeah, that is Yeah, you know, they're, they're boxy, but the insides are phenomenal. Yeah. It looks like their dream pad. Yeah, step inside. So they happily sit down to talk business. Um, obviously, with the Financial Times being what they are, um, the price is, is very, very good. Um, it's £700 per calendar month. OK. Um, and that's that between the, the two of us? Yes. Okay, yeah, sorry. so £700 for the apartment. OK, and, cool. Uh, At that price, it's a steal. £700 a month between them is a rent that even students can afford. Um, basically, it's going to be on a first-come, first-served basis. Yeah. Um, you guys are actually the first to see it, so oh, yeah. okay. what do you think? I like, I like it, and it's, pretty, like it's it. probably the best one I've reviewed so yeah. far. Like. I, 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 yeah. I, think, I think it's all right. Yeah, yeah. OK. You want to do the video? Yeah. As, as quickly yeah. as that? Yeah, yeah sure. All right. Yeah. Knowing the marks have taken the bait, Paul hits them with his requirements. Uh, in order to secure the apartment, yeah. what you need to do is you need to um, illustrate to us that you have the access to the funds. Okay. The quickest way to do that is simply to transmit money to yourselves yeah. by a money transfer. So for example, you take money and send it to, to David, right? Okay. Once you get that, David doesn't take it out. You then fax us a copy of the receipt. Yeah. You can then take that money right back out. Okay. And it's yours. 
Okay. Um, that way you don't give the money to anybody you don't trust. Yeah, it's always between you guys, yeah, but we know it's like good. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 makes sense. Yeah. So to secure the flat, the boys need to show that they have access to a month's money. They must do this using a wiring service to transfer the £700 from one to the other. It's a system where cash can be sent to someone and then accessed within minutes anywhere in the world from agents of the wiring service, often in small independent shops. Once the marks have faxed Paul the receipt of the transfer, the flats will be taken off the market. Fax that um, to this number here, okay? But also call me. What I'll do is I'll call the office, make sure that fax is right, and as soon as they have, I'll stop over you. Fair enough. All right, so here's my, uh, here's my phone number here, telephone number. That's the fax number you want to send it to, okay? And that's the place that you want to go to. All right. All right. Cool. I'll send it. It couldn't be simpler. Paul's even given them details of somewhere local that they can do the transfer. There's no time to lose. They head off to follow Paul's instructions and make sure they don't miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. True to his word, one of the marks goes to the place Paul recommended to deposit £700 in cash to be transferred to his mate and then fax Paul the receipt as proof of funds. And as instructed, he then calls Paul to let him know it's done. Hi. Great, great, so you've sent the fax and uh, what I'll do is I'll call the office. Yeah, yeah, everything should be fine. Why don't you just give it, uh, give it an hour or so and then just go and pick the money up and uh, put it back in your bank. Great, okay, bye. With the deal apparently almost done, it's time for the other mark to withdraw the money left in his name. But their day, which started so well, is about to turn into their worst nightmare. It soon becomes clear that something is wrong. In fact, their £700 transfer credit has disappeared. There's nothing they can do to get their money back. But how can a large sum of money left in a secure electronic account for one individual to collect simply vanish into thin air in the space of an hour? They're, they're saying that we can't retrieve the money. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this before, so I don't know. I'm very, I'm very, very confused right yeah. about it. So I don't even know what's going on, and he's telling us that we have to wait till half five to see his manager. On. Once Paul and Jess had done their jobs, it was all down to Alex. He simply scanned in his own driving licence and altered the copy, so the name matched that of the mark receiving the money. He then picked up the transaction receipts, which the mark who sent the money had faxed straight to the hustlers. He now had all the paperwork required to withdraw their money. But not leaving anything to chance, he also donned a lab coat and a fake NHS ID badge bearing the mark's name. After all, who wouldn't trust a doctor? As electronic money transfers can be collected from outlets anywhere in the world, Alex headed for his local news agent. Hello. Hello. I need to uh, pick up that. OK, yeah. He knew he had just under an hour before the marks would try to withdraw their cash. I have a photocopy of my driver's licence, would that help? First, he had the ID that matched the intended recipient of the money and a backstory for why it was a copy. No, I, I'm sorry, it's just that I had my wallet stolen and I've had a friend send me some money. Yeah, no, they broke into the car, took the wallet, took my medical kit, took pretty much everything. Then, after providing the transaction number from the receipt... £700 as well. Yeah. It was just a matter of minutes before the shopkeeper was handing Alex every last penny of the Mark's money. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Not a bad morning's work for the hustlers. 
we suggested to the marks that their cash had been stolen by the letting agent. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even think, uh, what, nah. But, how can that be possible though? You faxed in the receipt, yeah? I faxed, the yeah, I faxed the number, him the receipt. You obviously he had the look. It's, there is the number, mate. This is the receipt. This is what I faxed him. The guy, Rob, he he's, he's seemed like a genuine guy. And the, and the woman as well. I, I can't say, I couldn't put a word. I, obviously, I don't know these people, but from, you know, first first time approach, they seemed fine to me. They seemed fine. <laughs> I could cry. I could actually cry right now, I mate. Mean, I could cry. It's emotional. It's very emotional. What's really clever about this scam is that the mark is lulled into a false sense of security when sending the money. They're sending it to a friend or a relative, therefore in their mind making it impossible for any hustler to get their hands on the cash. Remember that while money transfer companies can be extremely convenient when you're sending cash abroad or to friends, they're also a favourite amongst fraudsters for getting money from their victims. If you are going to give somebody information pertaining to one of these transfers, make sure you find out exactly what information allows someone to take the money. And remember, that money could be taken out anywhere in the world. The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some, so who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, oh, that's that's sick. They give you the inside track so bad. and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. It's strange to see him walk away like I felt so awful afterwards. <laughs> oh, I hate myself now. This is the Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is former tennis world number four, Greg Rosetsky. I'm feeling a little bit uh, nervous and excited at the same time because I really don't know what's going to happen. When you're kind of clueless, it makes it more interesting. I think everybody's been hustled once in life, but we learn from our lessons very quickly. So we try to spot the hustler, but the good hustlers you don't actually see coming. Greg won't be clueless for long. It's time to meet the hustlers and find out what's in store. So what we're going to do today is we're going to illustrate one of the key differences between a hustler okay. and a thief. Okay. If a thief takes something, we're going to try and get someone to give you a large amount of money. Okay. It's pretty simple. The idea is, is that they're expecting, hopefully, security to come in and pick up some money. Okay. And uh, before the real security gets there, you're going to go in and take the money. Okay. How are we going to convince them though? So Greg's challenge is to walk into a shop imitating a security man and make the shopkeeper hand him their takings. In order to look convincing, he'll need a few props, an ID badge and a clipboard, a secure money box, and most importantly, an authentic looking uniform. You know, it's not sexist, but... There you go. Okay. Looking good. Excellent. Greg's as ready as he'll ever be. We don't know the layout until we walk inside. We've right. scattered it from the outside. Don't make me feel too nervous now. No, no, no. Let's do it. Awesome. Your clipboard. Wonderful. Thank you. Good luck, boys. Thank you. Thanks. There's no turning back now. The hustlers have selected this busy jewellery store as Greg's target. They've been watching it since it opened this morning and are certain that today's genuine money pickup hasn't already been made. Alex will accompany Greg into the shop to add authenticity and keep an eye on proceedings. But it's Greg who'll have to approach the shopkeeper and take the money. This is an audacious scam which requires plenty of nerve. To pull it off, Greg will need to be businesslike and avoid getting into conversation. And there's another crucial reason why Greg can't waste any time. The real security man could turn up at any moment, and if they're still inside the shop, this scam will be well and truly blown. This is it. Morning. Here for the pickup? Yeah. First impressions count, and so far, the woman clearly believes they're genuine. Right. 
Just need your signature and printing your name and the amount, please. Okay, should I put this in secure? Greg seizes his chance. As soon as the bag of money's within reach, he grabs it. The shopkeeper gives it the briefest of glances, and then carries on. There's still no sign of the genuine security man. Thank you. That's 11 but Greg doesn't want to hang around, and he's certainly keeping the chat to a minimum. He just needs to give her a receipt, and he's done. Thank you. And in less than a minute, he's out of there. Greg's just convinced the shopkeeper to willingly hand him her takings and made a potentially treacherous sting look easy. So how has committing daylight robbery made him feel? It was really nerve-wracking and it, it was, you know, you're very nervous about it, but you kind of just have to get into character and get on with it, really. No questions asked whatsoever, which I was quite surprised about because they gave over a lot of money. I kind of feel like, how do we get away with that? And I want to give the lady back her money right away because I, I feel really sorry for her. So hopefully she'll learn from this lesson and this won't happen to them again. It's a lesson she's about to learn as the real security man arrives for the pickup. Guys who came in a van, okay. and they were dressed typically like you, and they asked me to give them the same as it was. Do you give this kind of receipt as well? Not surprisingly, this guy has never seen a receipt like the one Greg left behind. As he calls his head office to establish what's happened, it starts to dawn on the shop staff that the first security man might not have been entirely legit. And that their hard earned takings will never be credited to the company account. Where is the stamp? Where is the name of the company? Where is. It's a just a piece of paper. Did you see his ID or not? I just gave it to him. Did you see the ID? You can't trust anyone. We asked the mark how much money Greg has taken. £3,207. It can go up to 10,000 or 20,000 pounds also, so the, in that situation it would be very dangerous. There was every reason for me to believe that they were genuine. You know, ask a few questions, um, make sure everything looks legit. Still to come. Think of something positive. New Age Paul turns skeptics into believers with his healing stones. She went up to them, not believing at all. Ten minutes, and I bought and she's bought one. We all enjoy a night on the town. And a good night becomes a great one when it doesn't cost a penny. Here's the challenge. The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. Double, I'll buy it double. Yeah, all right. <laughs> the prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. No. So watch and learn. Paul is out in a Brighton bar and fancies a free drink. The rule is, as far as I'm concerned, if you go out, if you buy a drink, you've failed, okay? So this is, this is the kind of thing you can do if you never want to buy another drink again. And it's a challenge. All you've got to do is carry one of these with you. This is a, this is a balloon. It's a party balloon. Oh, yeah. I'm sure something else would work, but that will do just fine for now. Um, party balloon, and the idea is to use this to pick up both these glasses at exactly the same time. Okay. All right. You got it? Yeah. Figured it out? Yeah. Okay, here you go. Um. So only using the balloon, pick up I the mean, glasses. I mean, you can blow the balloon so you can hold on and get it stuck in this cup and pick up the cup up, but that will leave this one out. So. That's interesting. Stretching. Oh, yeah. Hmm. You are going to break something. Maybe yeah. we'll step back just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Your fingers are touching the glasses there. You guys don't want to buy me a drink, but I think the time has come. Okay, one balloon and uh, two glasses. So. Time to show them how it's done. This goes I think in there. I've got it. No, but it's gonna. You got it. And then, yeah. Oh God, what am I thinking along those lines? Very good. 
well. It does look a little rude, I'll give you that. But it does, um... Paul arranged the glasses mouth to mouth and then placed the balloon between them. He then inflated the balloon until it gripped the glasses enough to lift them up. So, I'll have. I feel like a cognac. Might as well just get a tap for this guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's market day at a trendy location, a popular street market attracting millions of tourists and locals alike. Here, you can buy everything from the weird to the wonderful, and setting up shop with the rest of them are Alex and Paul. They're catering for the new age market, selling all sorts from healing stones from around the world to dream catchers and joysticks. Clap to yourself. <laughs> this is the alternative. Hello. This looks interesting. Morning. Hello. What are you after at the moment? Where are you at Something spiritually? Positive. positive energy. Yeah. Can you have a look at these? They're very good for um, getting your chakras all aligned. Yeah. Oh, I believe in Oh, that's good. OK, so you need to follow your path, focus on your goals. This girl is a strong believer in spirituality, and Alex seems to know what she's looking for. Whilst Paul deals with her friend, Alex illustrates the power of his stones. Now, I carry a stone with me the whole time. I've right. um, carried it for about six years now. Yeah. I'm going to show you something. Stand okay. over here. Now, you're quite, I'm a lot bigger than you, right? right. <laughs> Stand back a bit. All right, look. Uh, push me over. Grab either side. Oh. Push. Actually, you've got quite a lot of strength in you. OK, so I, I will lose my balance. OK. Oh, but look, this one, I'm going, to try and, I'm going to try and use my stone for this one. And I put it in my palm, my hand. OK, push. I can't, maybe. So you really had to try quite hard. Yeah. One more time. Push. It, it, it's an interesting... It's how, much, how, how you can focus your energy by just using a stone. Now, I, I have that feeling that my chakras are aligned and I'm stable, I'm within myself. Yeah. And that's what The girl has really bought into Alex's test. With the lady sold and stone in hand, a friend decides to take the plunge as well. Don't think about it, follow your feelings. You're thinking about it. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Very good. It's a very, very strong stone. Very well known. So that's 20 pounds for all three. That's right. 20 quid for three stones. Sun's come out and you're doing reductions left, right, and centre. Thanks, mate. There you go. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Look after your chakras. Bye. Did I say that out loud? Yeah. Yeah, you did. They leave happy with their deal of three stones for 20 quid. It's not long before two more potential customers come along. And would you ever consider using something like this? They're not believers. Perhaps Paul can change their minds. One of the things we do is we just try and show how energy flow is affected. Not by the stone, but by what you see the stone as in your mind. So take, hold your hand out a little more. There you go. I'm going to push down. I can push it down. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. So we're going to put this in here. Think of something positive, something that you want to happen in your life. Close the hand. Hold it out like this. I'm going to do exactly the same, put the same amount of pressure on. It's very, very difficult now. I'm actually putting more pressure. It is, it is amazing the effect it has. So just carrying something that, like that with you can center you and put all of your energy into one very positive place. I think that's a good stone for you too. The stones have spoken. Looks like they've been converted. I'll get one of these. You can't take your hands off it. Yeah, you see? See? 15 pounds, please. Two more happy customers. Thank you very much. Lovely, thank you. There you are. Have a lovely day. Keep it in your pocket. It turns out that the stones do more than just give you strength. They also say a lot about your personality. Are you a musician? Do you play music? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What, what? Are you a guitarist? Combining a bit of fortune telling along with the strength tests, and Alex and Paul sell another two stones. Enjoy. Take, Take care of your stone. We will. 
In fact, when you can actually prove the power of the stones, they just sell themselves. Much, much stronger. You say you're not drawn to me, you keep picking it up. Well, now you know you've got me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good, man. It turns out to be a lucrative day, with the stones from around the world ranging from £5 to £20. Yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit brown. It's a little bit brown. But with all the powers that these stones appear to possess, where do they actually come from? The truth? From a big bag picked up at a garden centre. A bag like this can contain thousands of stones. And after a bit of polishing, being put in a nicer bag and sold via some fancy patter from Alex and Paul, the potential profit can run into the hundreds of thousands of pounds. And the strength tests? They're fake. When Alex asks the mark to push him over without his stone, he genuinely stumbles backwards, as anyone would. But when he has his stone, he subtly pushes upwards on the stick, using the principle of the deflection of forces, which redirects the force from the mark up and away from himself, allowing him to stay fixed. Paul's hand test is even simpler. Pushing down on an open hand is easy, but once the stone is in a tightly closed fist, the muscles harden and naturally put up more resistance. It's so simple but effective enough to make someone part with their cash for a garden stone. I literally went up to there, not believing at all. 10 minutes and I... And she's bought one. <laughs> they totally understood my point of view and they made me believe that they know exactly what I was talking about. And then they were doing all these tests and things. All right, all right. it's going to slap that with yeah. the stone. Shouldn't I, I shouldn't. I moved. But it didn't yeah. work. <laughs> okay, well, I want my money back. back. Yeah, you know that. I think they're going to make a killing, yeah. No, oh, 15 pounds out of us for two stones. Nah, that's a tenner. That's a tenner gone. When it comes to buying something like this, we would definitely not recommend trusting a stall that showed up in a market overnight. Also, do a little bit of research. Everything we sold on that store was completely bogus. It doesn't exist. If you typed any of the names of the stones on the internet, you wouldn't get any replies. Scam artists regularly try to exploit people's genuinely held beliefs. If you hold a belief that some kind of artifact has some particular significance for you, you should always make sure that that artifact that you're being offered has got some provenance. Ask to see some certificates, ask to see some photographs where it's from, get some guarantees about it. Because if you don't, the chances are that what you're buying is a piece of rock from the local garden centre. So remember, hustlers are everywhere, and people aren't always who or what you think. He, he seemed like a genuine guy. Appearances can be deceiving. So think twice and keep your wits and cash about you. Did I say that out loud? Yeah, you did.